Welcome to Fabulous Women Over 40, hosted by celebrity stylist Kara Allen. Join Kara as she interviews amazing women, sometimes younger and amazing men as well, in their 40s and beyond. Here's Kara with our Fabulous Woman of the Day. Hello, everyone, Hello, everyone, and welcome, and welcome to another to edition, edition of Fabulous, of Fabulous Women, Women Over 40. 40. Today, Today, my guest, my guest is an actor, is an actor she's, she's an author, author and a TV and personality, TV personality hailing, from hailing from New York New City. City. <laughs> my good friend, friend Tara Wallace, Tarka how, Wallace are how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm, fantastic. I'm so excited I'm so about excited having this conversation, having this conversation with, you. with you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. So... Let's so, see. I thought we would start in the beginning, in the beginning right? Um, right? Why don't you tell, um, us, don't a you tell us a little bit about, about your upbringing, your upbringing and, your family? and your family? Um. So I grew. I. Uh, so I grew up in rural Mississippi, mm. always in a very small town. It's so funny because I just had an argument with with one of my best friends today about our town. So we're arguing that is it a town or is it a city? I'm like, dude, <laughs> it is a town. I don't. I know we have to say city for address purposes, but this is a town. We we live in a town, and right, um, right. You know what? It was just a really real place. You know, people planted food in the summertime. Um, um, things were all seasonal. Now you walk to a grocery store. You know, you just kind of have everything is always there for you. But when I grew up, everything was in season. Even now, if I if I find something in the grocery store, I, I bite something and I'm not paying attention. I, it, it's out of season for me. Like mm -hmm. when to eat peaches, when to eat pears. Like it's, I, it's, it's, I can't really eat a pear in the summer. It's like pear season is like September or like certain types of corn, you know? Um, so, you know, it's just a, a really real place, you know? Um, all the women I knew for lack of a better word were just so strong just tough, just solid, like the backbone of every family. Um, mm -hmm. And I grew up with that. Just anywhere you could turn, there was a superhero woman standing in that corner. Um, nice. Just when you thought you were so small and you were, in, they didn't see you, you, you would do something and they would say something. They would, they would let you know it. it um, even telling your mama. your mama. <laughs> well, you, you know, it, no, not, not even that. It would be like how I responded to something, mm -hmm. um, or if if I would sit down and I had on a dress, if my legs were not properly closed, I'd be like, "Ooh, maybe she's sitting real high over there." You know, it, it was just an acknowledgement that even though you think they were not watching you, they were indeed watching and observing you, and. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was really good for me because, you know, it always was like little reminder that you are definitely, you definitely matter. We definitely see you and we're definitely concerned about, you know, just even the smallest of things um, of who you are as a young girl in the, in the family. Nice. nice. And so how many, so siblings, how many siblings, do you siblings do you have? I have eight brothers and three sisters. Wow. 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 How is it growing up with a family of 11? Well, my immediate family, my mom and my dad have seven kids together. So um, mm. I don't know if you know what it's like to have to share a big bag of potato chips. Even back then, not just now like when it's like 30% <laughs> air. It was just never enough freaking chips in the bag. It's always you never get enough. Um <laughs> You know, right, and then right. and then when it was like your turn to get the prize out of the, the the cereal box, it's almost like your turn never quite came around. You 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 know, like the next box, that toy is gonna be mine. And the next crack <laughs> bread box, that toy is gonna be mine. And it seems like my my turn never came, and I'm like, where's my tattoo? I want to spit on my tattoo and put put it on my arm. But um, hilarious. So you know what I I, I kind of grew up a tomboy. You know, I, I know. It's like I was a tomboy, but I liked to play with Barbie dolls. So it was a very weird thing. I liked to shoot guns mm, and be a part of what my brothers were doing. But then right, right. when I had enough of them, I would go and play with my dolls on the porch. 
So I, I kind of grew up learning how to play alone mm-hmm. because my brothers weren't really playing with the dolls. They were shooting guns and trying to trying to trying to hunt and things like that. Right, but, right. So I grew up on the porch with my dolls, um, um, and and doing that alone. So. I think that's something that's always kind of stuck with me. I'm I'm able to be alone and comfortable being by myself mm. for um, large periods of time. And where do you fall, fall in the family? In the family. Are, you middle, Are you middle, older, older younger? I'm younger. the oldest girl, which makes me the oldest of everybody. Um, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so, so technically, you know, in the house I was raised in, that would make me the third child and the first okay. one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So did so, you know that you, you had, a had a propensity for acting, for acting when you were young? Or like, how did you get into it? Um, that kind of goes back for a long, long time. Just watching TV um, and just seeing things. And um, at first I didn't know quite what to call it. You know, mm-hmm. and it, was, it would be like one week there would be a cop show and I would love the female character. I'm like, oh my God, I want to be a cop. And then the next week that, you know, it would be a doctor. And I'm like, oh no, I want to be a doctor. And I'm like, what is this thing called, <laughs> you know? And then once I realized that's what it, before I realized that's what it's called, I was like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I watch the soaps a lot. I love the soaps. And I remember getting in trouble a lot because I would make little boys kiss me so I could practice my soap kiss. <laughs> Oh, you know it was such an innocent thing it's like it's like no we're acting this is acting you know it's like, i didn't quite know what to call it but i do remember you know someone catching me kissing their child uh and, and, and telling me get, get your hot ass back across the street get your hot ass back across. i'm like no no this isn't personal this is acting um so i think my first acting class was perfecting my kiss Hilarious. hilarious but that's actually, but that's kind, actually of cool, kind of though, cool though i think yeah. <laughs> perfect yeah, i mean it definitely wouldn't be cool now it would not be cool now. no 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 no, no. <laughs> no. no. somebody no. be somebody calling somebody, somebody, somebody on you, on you. <laughs> i remember when i got to the 12th grade that same kid telling everybody i used to kiss him and i'm like yes i used to kiss him i was practicing my acting i never denied it I'm like, yes I used to kiss him. It's he can, but it's, it's like bragging rights, rights for him now. Like what? It's like what? bragging what? rights. I was like, yeah, I used to kiss his ugly butt. <laughs> so, was there so anyone, was there in, anyone your in your life, your family, your, family, your, friends, your friends that, that kind of nurtured, nurtured your your desire, your desire to be an actress or the actress talent or the that you talent had? That you had. Um. Well, you know, you know, like when when you come from a small town and and you say things like that, it's all kind of new. So people don't really know what to take of it. But, but so I never took that personal. I always knew. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just something that I always knew. So I didn't really wait for support in that area or yeah. for someone yeah. to say it's okay. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. So it was always like, just wait, you'll see, you'll see. Mm. And um, I think that's part of, that's one of the things that people lack nowadays. Like people always feel like they need like a busload of people. Like, no one supports me. It's like, who cares? It's your <laughs> dream. Go live it. Like, right, it, right. it's like, why do, why do you, if, if, if you have a desire, right, to, to create or be something, you know, what is the weight on the approval of someone else who wasn't given the dream? You know, it was given to right, you. Right, right. So, um, you just have to do it. And who can be present will be present and who can't, you know, they just, they can't or they won't. And that's okay. So, um, I, but I, my aunt Anne, when I was a little girl, she left Mississippi. This is my dad's sister. And she moved to California to be a model. And she would send back her pictures. And, you know, she would she was a model. And she also, you know, would be auditioning for commercials. So I think that was the closest person that I could relate to that was close to me that understood the, the, the desire to want to leave and do something that no one else around you is talking about. Right, and, right. Um, and so, so you have no guidance, but you know, that's what you want to do. So, um, yeah, that was kind of the closest thing, you know, as, as I got older and I would like throw things out of my parents, like, Oh, I'm thinking about moving to New York. They're like, what, you know, what? <laughs> and my mom right, was like, why right. oh, I was like, baby, why don't you just go and be a speech therapist? Aren't you in that department? 
um, when I was in college, she wanted to do a speech therapist. So at Jackson State, like, like speech communication and uh, speech therapy and speech and dramatic art acting were the closest mm -hmm. thing we had to. Mm -hmm. We're all in the same department. So my mom was like, why don't you just major in speech, in speech pathology? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. And I remember those girls, you know, I didn't really fit into that, that those girls, that group of girls. I was always kind of like a, you know, show up with a, a pink dress on, on a motorcycle kind of girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I so feel like I you feel being, being autonomous. autonomous helped you in that because like you were saying people were like you know like, you know why don't people, why support, don't people support me blah blah blah, 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 blah or whatever the fact that the you had such a strong sense, sense of self, self at a young at age, age obviously basically gave you the gave propensity, you the propensity to, be to be like hey like, this is i'm doing this it's not even like a thought it is what it is right because i don't think people have that necessarily you know and i don't i want to i want to confuse that with i was confident because i was extremely insecure insecure and who I am and my body, what, you know, what do I look like? What, you know, um, you know, just insecure, like the same insecurities any young girl would have that, that thing that we have that, that insecurity that we have when we just think that we're so different from everyone else, mm -hmm. you know, whether this, we think this, this cousin is prettier or that cousin has the longest hair, or that cousin is this, or that cousin is that. I think that, um, although, I definitely had those insecurities, but even in all of that, there was just this thing that I knew in my heart was, was where I was supposed to be. And that was the thing that felt right. And even in my life now, as I, I, I get involved in, in different things, trying to find my way. Cause you know, we're constantly learning, constantly trying to find our way. It's like, okay, all these things have happened, but I have to reel back and really start focusing on what I felt like my purpose was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I like that. I like that. <laughs> so then how so did then you get from, you Mississippi, get from Mississippi, to Mississippi to New York? Well, well, you know, that's a, that's kind of a long story. Let's see. Um, I was just trying to get the hell out of Mississippi. I'm 18. All my cousins had made it to school, a uh, university, and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I was like, let me just get the hell out of here. I'll join the military. Well, um, mm -hmm. when I swore in the first time I had like some time. <laughs> So I was like, why don't I just go to, 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 to college while I'm waiting? So I was going to go to like a community college, um, for like, just to get some mm -hmm. courses mm -hmm. and to be doing something. Um, right. And right. cause at, at that time, even as a young age, you needed to be doing something. There was, there was no sitting out a semester. Like these kids nowadays, like, let me go work for pennies. Cause I got to sit out mentally. It's like, just go to school and finish. <laughs> like, you're going to make, you, 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 you know, like if you think it's easy to go to work every day and work for pennies and not even make enough money to pay your bills, like it's actually harder and more taxing on you, your body versus just going to school. But, um, um, I didn't know where I wanted to go. So I was like, dang, you know, there's this university, there's Jackson state that's here. What should I do? So I was going to join, I was going to go to Heinz. I was trying to get all my paperwork in. It's last minute. School is starting in a few days or a week. And I need to get all my my stuff in for this junior for this junior come this junior college or community college, and mm -hmm. um, and I just so happen to call Jackson State, like just call them randomly and just say, hey, you know, if I'm if I want to go to school there, is it too late to apply? You know, and the girl mm -hmm. was like, well, what's your name? And I was like, Tarnasha Wallace, blah blah. She typed me in. She was like, well, it looks like here you're already registered and you should be starting class Monday. I was like. So it turns out this whole time I was talking about the military, my best friend's mom, who was um, our principal's wife, had mm -hmm. started applying to colleges, unbeknownst to me, because she was just so against the military that she was like, no, you need to go to school. So she took it upon herself, got my mother's, I remember her asking for my mom's W-2, but at that time I didn't know what that was for, you know, the right. for Pell right. Grants and uh student loans and whatever you can get in terms of helping you start school so mm -hmm. literally by monday i'm in culture shock because it's like i'm in the middle of the auditorium with 
thousands of students trying to register for classes. So you stand in one line for an hour just to realize you're in the wrong line. You got to go back up to this line, <laughs> and that line for an hour, just to go back to that line, just to go back to the original line that you were in. And because, you you know, you got to register, make sure the money's there. Then you got to go find house. I, I don't even know the process, but it was, it was horrific at that time. You know, yeah, yeah, no and, online, online thing, man. Thing, man. <laughs> no, like literally standing in a line for every department to get registered for school. Mm. You know, like one of the things I learned was to choose my classes, pre register, get my classes in. So that cut down on some of the lives, but you had to like really know how to do that. But that's how I ended up at Jackson State. It was like just by happenstance, I called the school just to see, and I'm registered. And I was like, oh. So I get to Jackson State and I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is this? I'm having so much fun. You know, I was having a lot. I mean, it's like one of the times in my life that I would go back and relive again and again and again. Just, oh, <laughs> and I, I, I met someone and they were like, Jackson State is a time I could relive over and over. <laughs> well, that well, I would call, I would divine, call intervention. divine intervention. <laughs> like well, literally. Yeah. literally. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So what did you end so up majoring? Did you finish your degree there, there or did you transfer there, somewhere yeah, else? I finished my degree there. I, I jumped in. I um, um, not that I always made the best grades, but even when I when I didn't, the next semester I knew how hard I needed to work to get the GPA back up. To mm -hmm. so I just I just I just jumped in school and literally just put my head down and just never and didn't lift up until it was over. And when, wow. I, when I realized it was over, I had finished in three, three, three and a half years in the summer session. Nice. nice. I just went nonstop through, I went to, you know, first semester, second semester and both sessions of summer school. Wow. wow. Yeah. And what did you end up majoring, end up majoring in? in? And speech and dramatic art. Like I knew from the beginning, it's like, it was, <laughs> um, I went, at that time, there was like a sheet you got for this major. These are all the classes you took. And I was like, it's no need for me talking to a counselor. It's I'm always that kind of person. Like, it's common sense. Let's just grab the paper, read it, and go do it, right? How hard can it be? Mm -hmm. I grabbed this paper. <laughs> I had this paper for four years. I folded it up. And I just went through taking classes. Taking classes wow. first. So I ended up taking everything backwards. I ended up taking all my core subjects, like the first two years of school. In the last two years of school, I was taking things like music appreciation. Hmm. <laughs> like, so everyone that, that I graduated with, they were like, why aren't you in acting with us? I was like, I took acting like two years ago. <laughs> why? I was like, what am I waiting for? You know, I just saw the paper. Right, I took right. the classes that were offered. The end. <laughs> well you knew you well, wanted you knew to do it right that was that was the thing so though, but can i tell you later on um some of the upperclassmen i i spoke to one of them recently and he said at that time everybody was like who the hell is this girl in our class and where did she come from <laughs> like you know you know at that time these are like the like the, the old heads like they were dancers and like um, actors and they were all doing their senior projects and I'm like oh let me be in your senior project you know I want to be an actress and and blah 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 and so um and they were just like who is this girl <laughs> why is she here <laughs> ma'am go to your class <laughs> so I remember, like acting one and acting two you took them like your senior year, like your first semester, then you took acting to the second semester. Mm -hmm. And here I am as like a second semester freshman in acting one. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn. Well, damn. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, after you graduated, you graduated, did you end did up you in, end New up in New York after that? Or like, what, what happened, happened after, after you graduated? After graduated? Um, after I graduated, I ended up, again, I wasn't in grad school because I didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, mm -hmm. and so I just didn't know what I was going to do and just trying to figure it out and, you know, just waiting for something to fall from the sky. And, and it did like an internship <laughs> fell on my teacher's desk on my, on, on my professor's, on my professor's desk. And it was like an internship to Crossroads Theater. So that intern was like a stage management assistant internship. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me, so that spring and that spring break. 
I went, I ended up taking that spring break going to um, New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey, interviewing for the theater. And, okay. Okay. and then literally that summer when I graduated, I graduated like on that Saturday and literally by Monday night, I was headed to the airport to go to, to um, fly out and go to uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Wow, wow, that quick, that eh? Quick, eh? Yeah, <laughs> I was just, I, it was like I was just out, and life as I knew it n- was never the same again. Like I was just, I, it was just over. It was out. My boyfriend drove me to the airport. I spent the, all that day, the night before. I spent all the night before finishing up what was missing in my senior this this that last package that you have to turn in the last big thing. Um, what it takes to produce a play, you had to have all these intricate pieces in there. And, um, after that, I drove home, said goodbye to my parents because they were like, what? So, yeah, <laughs> they still what? Still, what? <laughs> headed, in, headed in New Brunswick at $237 and a one-way ticket. And wow. my boyfriend drove me to Memphis that night. I don't know why I found a ticket in Memphis versus just Jackson. We drove like three hours that night. And I had to be at the airport at like six in the morning. I got to New Brunswick and it was just, I got to Newark. No, I flew into LaGuardia and, the, and one of the, the, the persons from the theater, Curtis came to pick me up and it was just like, we, you know, we got to New Brunswick and I'm like, I guess this is home. <laughs> you know, I started having to figure out my way like quickly, you know? But New Brunswick, um, you know, that's where Rutgers is. So it was a college town. Mm. Mm. And, um, but if I had to do it again, and when I think about it, I could see why my parents were like, so, I mean, they were just freaking out. <laughs> you know, when I think back on it, I'm like, I see why they would freak out. Like, when I, you know, and as I look at my nieces and I'm like, damn, what was I thinking? Like, to do that to my parents, just. Yeah, yeah. You know, like and how old were you at that point? I was 22. Mm. I was, you know, I was done with college, but I was 22. <laughs> it was a summer, um, summer. I was getting ready to turn 23. I was celebrating my 23rd birthday in New Brunswick. Wow. wow. Yeah. With my now best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Man. So then, so then after you did after the, you internship, did the internship, then, then what happened what from happened there? From Where, did, there? You Where did you end up? Where did you end up? Um, from there, um, I started um, uh, auditioning for grad school. So it's like mm-hmm. the end of the, the intern is ending. You know, I, I survived that little stint of what am I going to do after college. Now I got to get focused <laughs> and really figure out what I'm right, going to do. Right. So I started really applying for college for grad okay. school. So I, I applied and auditioned for Mason Gross, which is Rutgers. Um, I think at that time they only allowed like 17 students in. And then I applied to a few other places, but I ended up also applying to the new school university, which is actually studio drama school. And my friend, my best friend now, Claudine, she had a friend who had, who was at the school, Gustavo. And Gustavo was like, yeah, you should audition. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. You know, I auditioned, I got into the school and then I started, I started grad school, you know, like then the next, the next mark was secure. But also in there, I did like a little stint at Vassar College uh, after New Brunswick. Um, I was, uh, I applied for this thing and got into this film and TV um, program at Vassar College for that summer. So I was like, mm-hmm. I went to Mississippi, you know, I, I went back, came back up to New York to go to Poughkeepsie and was in Poughkeepsie for a summer. So it was like constantly all this change. I was constantly around different energy, different environment. I was very uncomfortable all the time because it was just, everything was just so different. Mm. And whereas I, I felt like so independent in Mississippi and I had my job and I, I had my apartment and I had school here I am like really an out of state student, you know, mm. um, you know, after the internship and then you, you, I was in that at Vassar, I couldn't really work. So we were, we were in classes all day, you know, kind of like operating like a conservatory, like acting all day you know, voice and speech and Shakespeare. And then from there you have to go and um, work on whatever play. Uh, there were always these plays. There were four plays 
from the whole summer stuff. So you had to go to your rehearsals. Then after the rehearsals, they were like there was like theater at night. Wow, so wow. It was you live, like, breathe it. <laughs> yeah, it was like live. And so even when you, we weren't putting up our own productions, there were like you know um, traveling shows that would come and be in the theater. So I mean, it was just constant, you know, and. And so I think I was 23 and a lot of the kids were very young. They were, some of them were like in their teens and, and late teens. And so I was like, you know, just, just at that moment, I was just really trying to absorb as much as I could about acting, really trying to find what it is, you know, because it's one thing to go from a dream or to see what people are doing on TV, but it was a totally different to be behind all of that and, introduced to another world of all of these things that go into it. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what Vassar meant, you know? Yeah. yeah. But it would but seem it like, would you got, like you got, like you, like really, you really learned the, learned discipline, learned the of discipline of the craft. Of the craft. And then, and having, then to, having to, in the, in the middle of it too, being, being kind of learning how to, how to just be adaptable, be adaptable with all of the all change, the, the change, constant, the constant change. change. Cause that's, yeah, a that's a lot of stuff, of stuff going, going on all at one time. Well, um, yeah, that was a lot going on at one time. Um, that was a lot. And then, uh, so after Vassar, I went home for three weeks and then I, um, now the next journey was getting back to New York where I was going to live. Mm -hmm. You know, all the grad school starting, I didn't have a place to live yet. So then that became, it, it was just constant. And honestly, I just, it never dawned on me that it wouldn't work out. Never. <laughs> yeah. Something that I wish I carried on with me now throughout my 30s and 40s because um, it was never an option that it wasn't going to work out. Like once mm -hmm. I set my mind on this day I have to leave, that was like my, my mom was like, well, you don't have a place to live. Like maybe you should stay here for a year and work. And I was like, no, like I am leaving on this day. Like I got to get mm -hmm. out of here. School starts. I will, and it was like, I'll figure out where I'm going to live once I get to New York. I'll figure it out. I'll yeah. Yeah. Out. You know, and then, then it ended up working out. You know, the <laughs> one of the people from the theater I used to child wrangle for at another theater, he was like, Tara can just, my my best friend ran into him. Claudine ran into him. I was like, you know, Tara's moving back because she doesn't have places to live yet. He was like, oh, I have my, my I have a three bedroom house. She can just stay there. So I ended up staying with Tim my first year of school. And Tim just, you know, took me under his wing, gave me a place to live, fed me, put money in my pocket to get back and forth to school, just helping or until I found a job right, right. and just really, really helped me navigate um, having a stable place to live and eat. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, and then getting back and forth from New Jersey back to New York, giving that stability to me so that I could start school. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Everything is Everything always is working always out for working me. Out That's what me. I always That's say. I always say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you just don't know how, but you know, once you, once you set up in your mind that that's what you want, uh, and you and you live like that's what's happening, mm -hmm. then so it will. So, what was so your what was first your big first break, break when, when, as far as? Far as acting and TV, TV or commercials or, or like what, or like what, what, what was the first, was the big, first job? big job? Well, my first big job, I think I'm still waiting for it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> my first big job. That's an active life, right? right? Right. Yeah. I said, I think I'm still waiting for that to happen. You know, I was fortunate enough to do reality TV and reality TV. Um, you know, it doesn't get you the job, but it, it affords you a space in the room. And mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, that's all I needed, you know? I think that the right, one right. thing that through all of this that I learned that was what I needed for myself is never, no, is just not an option. You know, in, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if I audition for something or, I mean, there are no's, but then I yeah. question yeah. the no's, then why is that a no? Like, what, is, <laughs> what, why don't you have relationships to make sure that that's not a no? You know, right, that's kind right. of my attitude now because I know that, that there's always an exception. It's, you know, there's never a final answer. Right. Right. You know, there's that's nothing, true. it's just never final. So I don't really live in the, the no, if it's, if it's a hard no and it's just not going to happen. And I look at it as, um, 
you know, this is going to mess up the plan that's already in place. So that was, <laughs> that's just how I look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So what was so the... What was the... So you were in so Love and Hip Hop New York. And so how, and so how, was, how was that, that experience? experience? I mean, I mean was, it, was it, I mean, I know I mean, reality, I know reality TV, TV, everybody's, everybody's always like, always oh, like, it's, oh it's, it's scripted, scripted, it's this, it's, it's that, it's, that, that, it's, it's not, not real. real. <laughs> so can so you give us a little peek behind the curtain on that? Is it real? Is some part scripted? Like what really goes on? Well, yeah, you know, like, you know, it, it's it's a system set in place to dig for things and find things. And mm -hmm. then sometimes you get things that just kind of land in your lap. So in terms of my story, they got the story that kind of landed in their lap and they went with right. it. So, you know, the very first season that I did Love and Hip Hop was pretty authentic, true to the core. Um, you know, there may have been times like parties or situations I probably wouldn't just naturally be in. Um, mm -hmm. But what happened in those places was still very real. Mm -hmm. um so that's how that happened but it was that was like a, a huge turning point in my life it, you know like we back to that uncomfortability of living on Vassar camp Vassar College's campus you know mm -hmm. so it's, it was like another one of those times where my life was changing um and my life was changing after I had gotten so comfortable how it was mm -hmm. and I think that was really hard for me that was yeah, really yeah. difficult you know um, because now it's like lifetime changes versus just, it's no longer just me, you know, me figuring it out. It's like, okay, now I have to be completely solid with the foundation, um, you know, because I have children now. Yeah. Yeah. So it changed. So all of that, all, all of how I thought about that change, how I, how, how I could have lived a very carefree kind of changed. Right. Right. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't like wasn't flying like by the seat of your pants anymore. anymore. You had to have some stability because, yeah. of, the because boys, of the boys, for right. sure. For sure. Right. So when we so met, when we you met, were you still were working, still working at, STK, at STK, I believe. I believe. Yeah, I was working yeah. at STK yeah. and pregnant with Ka with Kaz. Yeah, I was pregnant yeah. with Kaz. Literally, the day I met you, I had on a heart a heart monitor. During really? Like, I'm like, I'm, you, huh? Yeah. I didn't remember it. <laughs> yeah, I had like all these things because my my heart was like uh, not beating properly, so they wanted to monitor it for twenty four hours. So I met you, and I'm like, "Sorry, guys, I'm wired up today," so I had to sleep <laughs> with it. And um, yeah, that's that's how I met you, pregnant and wired up. Yeah, because yeah, um, you know, you know. We met, we met and we went, and out, to we went out to lunch, lunch from what I can remember. I can remember. God, it seems yeah. like it's forever, like forever ago. ago. I forgot the name of that place, but it's called Serafina's now. It's a Serafina's, but before that it wasn't. It was like a little garden. Yeah, it was, right? so, it was so cute. cute. It was oh, a it cute was little like quaint place. place. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Right, right, right before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you so were when working at oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, what were you saying? So when you so worked, when you at, worked STK, at STK, like, like I, you, I, know, you know, in New York, it's, York different it's different from, from the Miami, Miami one, one or the DC one, one or whatever, where there, whatever, there are a lot of like high profile like high people profile that came people in there, came there and, and did those, did those afford, afford you any opportunities, opportunities meeting people, people anything, like anything like that? Um, you know what? It did. Like working at STK was a, was a, like a crazy place. It was such a crazy place. And it's like working, there was like not really like any restaurant, you know, you're, Whatever you would think your restaurant experience would be, it wasn't. <laughs> right. Like, there was right. no restaurant job that could really prepare you for that place. Um, so, I mean, it always kind of like, you know, I don't want to say housed, but like fed, you know, the, the, just everybody, you know, the most popular, the most wealthiest, um, the, you know, the, the the people that are in the scandal like that that are in the the tabloids at the time they were all at STK it was like <laughs> one big party nonstop you know um, and then I remember the recession things slowing down and as soon as the world was back STK was like back and we were crazy again and busy again so you know I didn't I did meet a lot of people there um, you know I wasn't really uh, I met a lot of people there. I I have a lot of friends there from there, but mm -hmm. I wasn't really in a. I didn't use the opportunity to be opportunistic and like further my career in any way. 
Um, yeah. I tell yeah. you what it was. It was a, a um, it, you know, it was it, it was an experience, but I didn't. We did meet a lot of people, but I, I don't think that I was trying to sell myself onto what they were doing. Um, I thought that you know, people deserve time and space to just come and eat. You know, right, not, right, not or come and party or. You know, they shouldn't have to worry about, you know, every door they come in, the host needs a job. And I'm not saying that, you know, some people could win that way. You know, maybe that's my downfall, but I just thought they deserved their own time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you come in, you have a great time and this is not work. And finally you're off from work. And so right, there's right. Like this atmosphere that was created that, you know, everybody's a cool kid because we're all in here. Right. Right. You know, so. It was, it was yeah. <laughs> bet. bet. How long did you, How work, did there? you work there? I worked there for seven years. Uh, uh completion. Yeah, completion. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Seven. And it was probably yeah, like probably one of the, fun, the, the most fun, fun times you ever time had, you ever too, had I, would too I would imagine. There's, there's so much fun. And I remember um, a good friend of mine saying, yeah, we really have to start journaling about what's happening here. We're going to just lose it all. Like, they're, like on a day-to-day basis, the things that would happen. And I never really wrote it down. And I'm just like, dang. And then sometimes they'll, they'll say, remember that time? I'm like, no, dang, I don't remember that one. Like, it's just so, I mean, it was just so many, you know, that means I would be writing as soon as I got home every night. It was just, right. you know, it, it was Trying like a moment where right I could just live on this, whatever edge we thought we were on and then go home and be normal. And for me, it was like, go home and be a mom, go home and put Jameson on the potty. So it doesn't pee in the bed, you know, that, that was how I kind of looked at that. Definitely, Definitely reality, reality check, right? Check, right? <laughs> like, yes, I'm yes, glamorous, I'm and then I gotta go home and take home care of the babies. babies. <laughs> That's right. And the, the thing is, I don't even know if I was glamorous. Like, sometimes I would get work. I mean, I, I, I've been punched in the arm there. I was pregnant with Kaz and got punched in the arm there. You know, like, it was a crazy place. I don't know if it was glamorous, but, you oh my know, God. It, it was, you know, I mean, for some people, I mean, I'm working, so I don't think I don't think I had glam in it. I'm like, let me just try to look decent, but and, and you know, this makeup lasts till the end of the night. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I think we worked think kind we worked of. Kind of, of I, mean, I can't even I can't compare this to Katie's dreams dream slash love, but it was a, kind, kind of a kind similar, of a similar vibe, vibe in a sense, in a sense like, like, like this, this high end, end huge, huge nightclub. Night everybody, everybody came, came there, there, you know, you know like it was like nuts. It was nuts. Every night, every night. Every single single night. night. So, so yeah, it's it, it, it's similar to that. Yeah, you know, like it's um. I mean, you know, it's a nightclub, so I I can only imagine. Like, this is a restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Like nightclubs are very right, different. Right. You know, people are ready to party and spend money, and they they consciously decided what they're going to eat so that they can party and then, you know, and be ready to eat again after that. So yeah, I'm sure it was very similar. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's fun and it's like, fun. You said, and like you said I, with, the with the celebrities and people and that people would come that in would come you do you, you don't, do, don't want to be like all oh, hovering and, and crazy, crazy because, because the, the rest of the club is already like you, you know they're you know they're them out i mean the one cool thing was i did work with the concierge though so i got to walk a lot of the vips up to the room so it did it did afford me the ability, the ability to meet them. Meet them. And all I, I ever wanted was a picture. I didn't really care about anything else. And they were so glad to give that because it was like the beginning of the, like the, the night, night before, night before night anything got nuts. nuts. <laughs> so they were so like, like, okay, okay sure, no sure, problem. No problem. <laughs> but yeah, but I bet, you know, I can't even imagine in New York, like, even if it was a restaurant, I'm sure it was nuts. But so on, on, um, Love and hip hop. You were on, you with, were some on with some interesting, interesting characters, characters like Cardi, like Cardi B. B. <laughs> like, who was like, your who favorite, was your favorite people? people? Who are my favorite people? Um. Well, so the thing is, I didn't get to work with a lot, all, everybody. You know, like it looks like yeah. we're all together, but we're really not. So, you know, this person could be filming over here. Or they have some days mm-hmm. that they're filming, and these people true, have days true. That they're filming. Um. You know, and uh, you know. In terms of my favorite, um, I, don't, I don't know if I have favorites, but you know, mm-hmm. there are people that I did get close to. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, Yandy and I actually became. We were not. We didn't know each other. We were not friends when I started the show, and for years, you know, she kind of helped me when I had when I needed advice, when I needed, um, mm-hmm. um, even when I first did the show and I needed money, even like you know, you know, she she's helped me in so many different ways, you know, as I'm trying to prepare and get dressed and figure this whole reality TV thing out. So she was there, um, 
you know, really as a sister more than, you know, nice uh, sister nice. more than anything. So that was, that was cool. Um, um, you know, we, I did shoot this, this scene with Cardi, which is like really funny, but it's, it's weird. The, the weird thing about Cardi is I had already known who she was and had been following her, <clears throat> um, well before TV, you know, mm -hmm. and Thea would come and do my hair and we would go right to Cardi's Instagram and see what she had to, you know, <laughs> her latest, her latest spill on whatever topic. So, right. Um, and then one night I met her. I don't know if I knew at, at the time it was Cardi B, but I just know this girl, she's very quiet and we spoke and she's like, oh, you know, she said to me, you're so pretty. And I said to her, she's so pretty. And <laughs> it was like, you know, just a very, you, you know, you just had no idea it, 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 upon meeting her. She was so quiet. And then she got on stage and just started dancing. And so it was like this little shy girl. Right. I thought, you know, was just right here is literally on the stage making more money than I'm going to make in this clip. <laughs> so I was like, but I knew then I was like, oh, it's something about this girl. I don't know what it is. It's just something about her. And um, so, you know, when all of these amazing things started happening, her career started taking off. I'm like, oh, that's what that amazing. That's what it was. That's what it was about her. Like, you know, right, it, was right. just, it was just budding. It was about to like explode and turn into a full blown flower. So. <laughs> you know i'm serious it's 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 very true like i thought that from from the beginning and i, I but the thing is i have i've said it before then i'm like i don't know it's something about her like, i don't know what it is but it's something mm -hmm. and then i i saw her dance one night and we and we spoke because we had met each other before and this is like right before she was coming on the show and then when she came on the show you know i guess that was just like the the nibble, you know, before, you know, and she's like, you know, making these vast steps up the, up the, right, the right. Ladder. so, you know, you know, you know, when you work together with somebody, are you on the same show? You want everyone to be as successful as possible because you right, know, this person right. had to give or try to keep them from exploiting to even be on the show mm -hmm. um, to attain a certain level of success. So right you know, she right. did it you know and that's that's a, that's amazing even even i still watch her now and follow the story yeah 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 she's a wild she's a character, wild character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but she's so, so i'm sure, that, I'm sure that, she, she's so honest in ways that was the thing always about her she was so honest in ways that only we wished we could you know she would just say <laughs> i mean she was right, just so, right you know honest like even honest in her mistakes or honest in just whatever she was doing you know wrong or right she was just so honest in it yeah that, yeah you know there was a really there's not really no room for someone to point the finger because she would have already told you you know <laughs> the truth of the situation right she right. reminds me a lot of m, &M, lot of m, &M, m, &M right in right. eight mile in eight how mile, at the end when the, end, when the little guy was like, was like how are you gonna you, gonna, you know defeat you know, the, rap the rap guy, guy whatever, whatever the guy's name was i can't remember and he was like he was like he thought about he thought it about and he was it. like, he, he was just, like, he, he just told every, he already told everything. Told so everything, so, there, was so there was the guy had nothing to say, to say. <laughs> you know, the yeah, end. So, and I always and felt I always like that when I saw her too, I was like, she's just, she's just so honest. And like, like, what do you do with it? You can't do nothing with that. I mean, she said some stuff. I'm like, I wish I could have said that. I wish I could have said that, you know, like, I'm like, damn, like, how did she even think of that? You know? Right. right it just and falls it just out of her mouth, mouth. and it's like whoa, like, whoa okay. okay we would just be like, <laughs> dying laughing, dying laughing. Yeah, for yeah for sure sure but so but what, so I, what love, I love i mean you wrote, I mean, a, book, you wrote a book so tell us so about, tell your, us book. about your book um so the goddess potential um we wrote that about five years ago six years ago dang six years ago six years old mm -hmm. um and the whole idea of the goddess potential was it was, it wasn't really, it wasn't designed to just be a book that you just read out completely, but it was designed to be a workbook. Um, okay. Okay. You put like, you know, you apply these things, um, so that, you know, and also to, to keep remembering as you're changing or give you tools to help, you know, guide your life where you want it to be. Tomorrow is always a different day, you know, especially mm -hmm. when we live in kind of like in a, in a world where everybody is really living off of social media, whatever they see, the, the hottest right, reel right. is off of um, social media. 
um, they, they're thinking that this is the person's life and it's really not. And, it, and it's, it's like a reminder, like you are where you're supposed to be. Right. You're okay. <laughs> Breathe, you know, yeah, yeah. drink some water, take care of yourself. <laughs> and, you know, tomorrow's a different day and here's some yeah, tools yeah. that help you start that off. Right. So that was the idea of the goddess potential. And, um, you know, I, I co-authored that book with Allison Alexander and um who you know we, we were just coming from do, two different places like I, w- I had just had this crazy thing happen to me on love and hip-hop and she had just gotten married um and you know we came together and i just think it worked you know mm-hmm. it was our first mm-hmm. book and we were able to get it all done get it published we self-published um and, you know, we, we always look to try to find different ways to promote it and put the book out there for people to, to pick it up because it's not one that you, it's not one that has an expiration date on it. Mm-hmm. It's always relevant. For sure. For sure. And, I yeah. like and I feel like you having such, you having a, such um, a, um, you coming from, the, coming south from the south and then, and then <laughs> moving to the, <laughs> moving north, to the north, right? right? <laughs> it kind of provided, kind of provided you, with you with a cool, cool opportunity, opportunity, right? Because right? you have... You have Southern, Southern is so, is so like, like just, every, welcoming just welcoming and loving and everybody, everybody and treating them well. And, treating and you always operate, you always with, operate such with such poise and, and grace, I feel like. I mean, like, even, and even when, when weird things are, things crazy, crazy things are happening, things are happening, you just, you just, happening, sort, of you just sort of have this sort of zen. zen. It's not like I've never like seen I've you like flip out or like lose it on anybody. Even when the kids are going crazy, you're just sort of like, like real even keel. And I love that because like, I'll be over here going off like a chihuahua. Oh, well, with the kids. <laughs> no, no, I definitely am going off for like a chihuahua. Um, um, but you know, like you know, um, I, no, I definitely have my moments. I, I'm not always in. I always try to be zen, but I, I'm not always in. And when I'm not, I'm like, oh, they got me. They got me. <laughs> what, was it, what was the trigger word that got me? So I know it next time. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know, like what what I look what I try to do is. And I think this is so important for every person and especially uh, women over 40, because we've lived a little bit. We've had a hard break. We've had some disappointment. We've had some huge successes. Um, right, right. We have had a lot of money in the bank. We've been broke. We've been, we've been a lot of things by the time we hit mm-hmm. 40. And I think right, all right. of those things were to aid in the growth of who we were, even when we were 20. Um, mm-hmm. And and I, and I think that, you know, in all of that, the whole purpose of that is to really learn and know yourself. And the thing about me is that I know what I'm weak at. I know what I'm not good at. I know what I'm going to fall through on. I know um, if I'm going to stick to the diet or if I'm going to stick to the discipline. So when you know yourself, when I fall back or I, I eat the thing I'm not supposed to eat, um, mm-hmm. um or the guy I say, I'm not going to text back. And I text him anyway, you know, I already know <laughs> that that's in me, you know, right. I won't continue. So when I do it, um, I know that about myself that I'm going to do right. That. Right. Um, and so I don't beat myself up about it. Right. Um, right. You know, because you know, th- there's always, always these rules, right. To the game of what you're supposed to be playing. But I always tell people, I'm right. like, I don't have time right. to play games. I don't play any games. I'm just straightforward. I have no rap. I have no game. It's like, I, I, I don't even have, like, at this age, I can't even remember if, if there are steps to the game. By the time we get to step four, I would have forgotten one and two. <laughs> so it's like, I just have to play it straightforward because, like, that's the only thing I can kind of remember. Right. Right. Which makes Which it makes simple because then it's then like, it's like I, don't I don't have to think of you don't have to keep score. Keep score. Who did, who did, who did who I say what to? What to? Like, like that's just, just too much. That's too much energy. energy. Right. It's super scary sometimes. So sometimes um, you know, you grab someone's face, someone's face, and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna love on you." And they're like, "What?" Right. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And they're like, "You know, like what? What?" Or you know. You know, just, mm. just something, you know, like just, just even if, if, if it's a woman that, you, you know, it, it could be a woman on social media and I just like her energy or who she is and what she stands mm. for. Like I'm in her DM, like, Hey, how are you? You know, um, you know, you know, we, 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 we like, we, we are attracted to people, you know, so I'm not afraid to like, yeah. Yeah. 
um, reach out to these people, reach out to a person that I don't know or say hello or make myself known um, just because I like their spirit, their energy, what they're doing. Um, you know, I'm getting inspiration from their page or things that they're saying. Um, it's it's right, funny because right. like with me, when I post things, I, I rarely post personal things, but I will see a quote that I like and post and people are like, oh my God, what are you going through? I'm like, nothing. I just like my algorithm conjured these up. I like them. And so I'm posting because I think some woman needs to hear it. And I've been there, may have needed to hear. But people always think that you you wear your heart in your sleeve. And it's like, no, not really. <laughs> no, I just yeah, like it. And I thought that, that it would be that nice, would to, be share nice to share it with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. I want to read it a couple times today. Get it in my spirit, you know? Right, right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, people are very sensitive these days, you know. <laughs> a little too a little sensitive, too for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, um, so, like, so, like, I love I the love goddess, goddess potential, potential, and you know, and I spent some time in the Mama Gina space, space with all the goddesses, goddesses and all of that. that. So, so, you know, you I'm, know the I'm the style goddess. goddess. Now, if now, you had, if you had to give yourself a name, what goddess would you be? Oh, um, Oh, my God, it's what I be. Well, this is tough. I think you'd be Southern Southern Charm Charm Goddess. I was going to say something with Southern Belle, the charm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Southern Charm Goddess. I like that. Something. Because, like, like, like you know what's funny? funny when, when... We were, we were following, following each, each other, other on, on IG, IG for, for a long, a long time, time, and then and I would look, look at some at of the some comments of, of we know we people, people would say, like, what? "What is wrong right with, with people?" And like, it's like, it was like, you're, like just, you're just you're flying just high, high, like you don't even smell. I was like, you don't even see it. I'm like, I'd be funny. It would be so funny because I would be like, literally, the world's going crazy because the they had got out that I was pregnant. And I would just be like, child, I am nesting. I'm trying to put this tree up. I cannot be bothered, okay? I cannot be bothered. I am pregnant. I am pregnant. If and, and, and it's like, if I cared about what y'all thought, abortion clinics are open 24 hours in New York, and I believe in pro-choice. So, no, <laughs> I don't care. Like, I'm having my child. And, if you know, it's like, you, and you, you know how hard it is to raise a child. So if yeah. for anyone who thinks that you're having revenge babies, it's like you've never been pregnant before, have you? <laughs> right. What like, kind of revenge is that there's, for there's, you to be a baby, baby, baby for nine, nine months? months. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, there is, like, do you understand the re- the revenge is to myself? Do you see what I'm doing? And then I've got to raise this child. Do you understand what that means? Like, yeah. like by the time I changed my second diaper, I wouldn't even be able to remember why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, well, you know, like, you know. You know. It's, and no, when I'm, it's just, it's just interesting, you know, people's perception of things. And so what the, um, I don't know if this works in my favor at all. I don't feel the need to, um, um, have to, push, you know, prove to people, constantly show people who I am. I know who I am. Yeah. 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 yeah, and you don't, and you, don't you, know? you know, and that's what I, <laughs> what I always what admired I about. about. I was like, she doesn't like, even like have like, to like, like, just say it. And that's and perfect, perfect cause because you know, you don't owe any. Nobody, nobody is paying, paying your bill. bill. Nobody, nobody is keeping you warm and nice. Nobody is doing any of that stuff. So it doesn't even matter, and they don't even know what's really going on. That's the best part. And with you and I have been um in the in the same places together, and people say things, and I'm like, that's interesting. You know, when people will blurt out something and say how they feel, I'm always like, that's just, I'm like, that's what they got from that? Wow. I'm like, well, these are the people that are running the world that are, that are, you know, have huge influence somewhere, you know, in some job. And I'm like, uh, interesting. Crazy. crazy. I mean, I mean, as we as know, we common, know sense common sense is not a flower that blooms, that blooms in everyone's in garden. garden. Oh, I have to use that. I have to use it. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, where do you like, come, come up with this? This, this is what this you is thought what you about? Thought like, about like, okay. You know, I've been uh, one of the things I've been doing is um, I saw an amazing documentary. Um, well, it's a, the documentary on the Ray Hansberry's life. I think it's Excited Eyes, Feeling Heart. Mm. And um, 
And you just learned so much, you know, um, who she was a woman of, of that time and some of the books that she was reading. So I picked up one of the books and and really digging into, you know, who are we as a woman? You know, like I think that, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm just very early on in the book, so I can't really go into depth. But, you know, when you ask the question, what is a woman? You know, I it it's a term that, or our definition of who we are has always been defined through the eyes of someone else. We've never mm-hmm. really had the opportunity to define it. And, and I think now we're kind of living in, an, in, in, a, in, a, in a space where, Women have said, we have done everything that people have wanted us to do. And now we're going to do exactly what we want to. And we're going to make our own mistakes and we're going to, and, and we're going to recover from them and we're still going to be fine. And we're going to adjust and we're going to um, do what we want to do so that we can define who we are as an entity in and of itself and not the lesser of what a man is. Right. You right. Know? And I think that, um, that's you know in my life that's where i am like really trying to define mm-hmm. who i am and and um and answer that question you know just for 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 myself to be a part of a culture of women that are really um defining who we are based on just just what just the simplest something that we want mm-hmm. you know um it, it, you know we're just kind of as a woman we're taught that we can't really want anything we can't really you know, if it's, if we want something, it has to be for the purpose of someone else. We mm. can't just selfishly want something for ourselves. Um, right, we right. can't just be, and, and we are perfect in our being and just exactly what we are. And, right, um, right. and that's kind of like, you know, with everything that's going on with all the things that women are doing wrong, especially the bashing of all the things that black women have done wrong is if we've been handed like this, you know, this, plate of gold and we've been eating off of it for years alone you know <laughs> we've just been right, eating off right. of this of this plate given by uh, uh what they say you know how uh, the welfare came in and took the man out of the home and we've been eating off of this golden plate ever since you know and i'm like right. wow yeah okay okay <laughs> yeah right yeah, be right. a fly in my wall for a couple days, days and see how that one right. and, and look i'm not i'm not trying to say politically you know who we've become has not been affected by certain political moves, but I am saying that um, we are still defining who we are. And I think that now that we can kind of live unapologetic is the first step in discovering and defining who we are and, and everything you've known us to be, scratch it. <laughs> scratch it. Yeah. Take, it yeah. take it off the table. <laughs> it's true. Take yeah. it off. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that's a great that's place a great to place start, to though, start from though, from like ground, ground zero, zero, right? right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On our, on our own, own like, like okay, okay we've done everything, done everything else, else for men, for, men, for, babies, for babies for jobs, jobs for, whatever, for whatever for years, years. Like, like but what have we been doing, doing for ourselves, for ourselves? Well, what, what we've been told that's wrong that's wrong we can't do anything for ourselves yeah. 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 that's selfish you can't overindulge like what's wrong with it she <laughs> <laughs> she's affected she's got a stare it's been tainted it's like really like like i'm clean for all these tainted other beings Everybody out of his, you know, right, know, just, right, just, right. just the idea of that is, is sickening. It's almost like, okay, you can live, but don't really live. <laughs> you can be, but don't really be. You can really, you can come over, but don't really come over. Join us on Zoom, you know. <laughs> From, a distance, From a distance, we don't want you that close. close. And, and I think we, you know, it, it, when women were just breaking out of that fear and, 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 and you know, running to the heels of, of, of freedom and saying you know let us work on ourselves and when we return let's see where that where that lands us but right right well i think that's a good good place place to to end end on on. (laughs) this has been a fantastic fantastic conversation conversation. and i want want to to have everybody everybody follow follow you and find find you where you are are. so where's the best best place for them to do that that. yeah so you guys can always follow me the best place to follow me is instagram i am tara wallace and um that just follow me there follow me there start there <laughs> do you have, do you have a, 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 website a website anywhere else you want people to people check, to you, check out you out on? on um well yeah you know what you guys just follow me on i am tara wallace and everything w- would be um listed on my instagram you guys can um, keep up with the things that i'm doing the latest things that i'm doing um and um you know we've i've 
we have I have some things that are happening, and so you just follow that, and you you can stay abreast on what's happening there. Well, I'm so excited, excited to, see to see what. what... Your next, Your next big gig is. is, and you know, I'll be there to cheer you on. <laughs> so I'm really excited that we got the chance to have this conversation because there were so many things I didn't even know. Like, I, I always love these conscious conversations. <laughs> Look, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I didn't know I was going to have this much fun. I didn't know we were going to, uh, yeah, you ask a few questions. I was like, what? I didn't know. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> but they were nice you know you know when someone asks you a question that you haven't already answered before and, yeah yeah and you're like oh dang like okay you know it, it feels good to answer something that that you know no one knows right, right. You know, it's a tricky well, thing i, I always, always want to be that that, that conversation that gets, that gets people, people to know, to know who, who you are, are and, 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 and not, not the, the normal thing, thing that you, you normally, normally get, get you know, you know con constantly, constantly asked, asked about and it's like that's right. old that's news old we've heard all of that before heard it. Heard it. yeah, yeah. So. So. It's over. We we're, we're starting, starting from, from scratch, scratch remember from, from, <laughs> no it's true it's true groundbreaking, groundbreaking. Well, well, thanks. thanks. It's, it's been, been great. great. And, and uh, well, hopefully, hopefully we'll have you on again. And, and when, when something else is breaking, breaking out, out, so we, so we can, can cover, cover that, that for you. you. And, and uh, kisses, kisses, love the boys. And, and uh, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. As we speak. Ow. Ow. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, thanks for, for, for being on the show with us. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. Please subscribe so you won't miss our next Conscious Conversation with Kara and her fabulous guests. Follow Kara on social on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Clubhouse, at Kara Allen. And connect with her on her website at karaallen.com. Also, leave a review if you enjoyed the conversation. Thanks again, and see you next time.